crazy right now um, but I don't have time to sort of sit down and film anything before I go this morning um, and so I just thought I would film whilst I'm getting ready so yeah <laughs> bedhead this morning um, I am travelling to Derby um, I'm going to do some more witness service training. If you saw my Instagram stories, then you will have seen that I was in Derby doing vulnerable and intimidated witness training. Um, so not everybody has to do that, but I really want to work with children. I can't really take you along as such um, because I'm literally just sat in a classroom all day today. So it wouldn't be very interesting. Um, however, I think it might be quite interesting to sort of throughout the day just kind of film bits and bobs to help you to see what witness service training is like um, and also to explain a bit about what the witness service actually is because I get a lot of questions about that and although I've kind of answered I don't feel like I've answered in that much detail um, so yeah that's what we're gonna do just waiting for my car to demist, but we're about to go to the train station and then I'm getting on a train. So this drive should be maybe 40 minutes because it's rush hour. So, yeah. so that took a lot less time than yesterday. Um, yesterday it took me like 40 minutes to get here and today it's taken me 20. So that's pretty good. I'm going to Derby. Um, I'm at the YMCA for two days of witness service training for vulnerable and intimidated witnesses. Um, so I did that yesterday and then I'm doing it again today, so this is my second day. Um, and also I'm just going to answer any questions that I've been asked about the witness service. There's two kind of witness service volunteers. You have your court volunteers and your outreach volunteers and I'm training to be both. I've been in the courts once a week, uh, helping witnesses out and that sort of thing. Um, and I'm also training to be an outreach worker, so rather than just meeting witnesses on the day that they go to court, I go to their homes or the school or their place of work and chat with them before, kind of explain everything that's going on. When they do go to court, I'll be there as well to help them through. And so today I'm doing my Brumble Intimidated Witness training so that I can become a, an outreach volunteer as well as a court volunteer. Yesterday we were looking at children, so it was really interesting. We did things like how you would explain different things in a court to a child so like to a young child you might say to them that the judge is like the referee in a football match because they make sure that everything goes smoothly um, and they make sure everybody's been fair obviously it can be super confusing for anybody never mind a young child going to court so did that and then um today we'll be looking at um people with learning disabilities and um, mental health problems and um, autism I think making sure that we are aware how we need to adapt our language um, and yeah just kind of have an awareness of the general difficulties that these people might have that other people might not um, to make sure that people can provide the best evidence possible I think I've done like four weeks now volunteering in court um, and then I'll be doing some outreach volunteering and I, I love it so much um, I just find it it's it's hard like some of it's really hard um, you deal with lots of like domestic violence cases lots of sexual violence cases um, assaults you know and some of it's really difficult but when a witness says to you thank you so much you've like put me at ease or oh, okay I understand what's going on now or anything like that um, that makes it worth it and that's why I want to do it because I feel like the legal system is so complicated and it shouldn't be this big scary thing that everybody is afraid of but for so many people and for me included if I ever had to go to court I would be terrified absolutely terrified um, and so we do things like preparing for cross-examination but we won't, don't do it involved in the facts of the case so we'll be like what did you have for breakfast and they might say toast it's like well I put it to you that you didn't have toast you had something else you know um, because that's kind of how a cross-examination would work I feel like I get a lot of support and I get a lot of training like oh now we've done five full days training plus activities that I'd had to do at home plus I'm shadowing volunteers and like having people um, evaluate me and watch me whilst I'm in the court itself so I feel like I have a lot of support um, which is great and 
the other volunteers are brilliant and I feel like I've managed to meet so many like such a diverse range of people because there's like younger people um, and then there's quite a few people who are retired and um, who are kind of doing it one day a week to, to do something with their time um, and yeah there's kind of everything in between and I, I love that I think it's so nice now ten past eight um, my train's in 20 minutes and I just need to go and pay for my parking and then get on the train about a 20 minute walk to the YMCA and it's bloody freezing. <laughs> Hello, so um, the last thing you saw was probably me walking into the YMCA I think and now I've got back on the train and I'm back um, and I just need to drive home. I'm just waiting here for a second, having a drink of water and stuff before I go. Um, I almost feel like this is a little bit of a silly video to make because I've not really shown you anything. You've mainly just seen like me walking around Derby and me in my car. But I thought it'd be a bit more interesting than me just like sat down doing it. And also, I feel like if I just sat down and filmed it in my bedroom, I wouldn't remember everything that I wanted to say. What exactly does a witness service volunteer do? Um, I've kind of briefly covered this, um, I've sort of spoken a bit about the outreach stuff, but the court volunteers, what we do is we go down, we meet um, the witness at reception at security, we take them up, we sit them down in a waiting room, we talk them through um, the process, like who will be in the room, that sort of thing. Sometimes witnesses have special measures, so for example you can have screens, so like a curtain around you so you can't see the defendant. Sometimes witnesses will do it via video link, so basically like a Skype call almost into the room. Um, we have all sorts, translators, everything. We're there to provide any explanations of anything that's going on, so if they're not quite sure like what exactly happens, what the legal proceedings are, we can tell them that. I think one of the most rewarding things for me is the onward referral. Um, you get a lot of people coming to court who they want help with different issues, whether that's finance, housing, domestic violence, um, just so many different things. And we ask every single witness, is there anything that we can refer, like do an onward referral for? And when I joined, like I was told you had to ask everybody, I thought no one's gonna, that just seems so stupid, but some of the help that people ask for is life-changing and it can be completely unrelated to the case that they're in for so like we might have men and women who come in um for like you know they're a witness in a driving offense um but they're asking for help with domestic violence that is really rewarding they were just kind of waiting for somebody to offer them the help and then once you've offered it and they take it and yeah that's for me that's really exciting and you just feel like you've done everything you can do to set that person like on the path that they want to be on which I really love we do a lot of work with the criminal prosecution service so we're completely independent from them but um we go and tell the CPS that their witnesses have arrived. Um, we, if there's any problems with the statements, the witness statements, we go and inform the CPS. We kind of just generally like work relatively closely with them. If we have any concerns about a witness, it speaks with CPS. Da, da, da. The one thing that I think surprises a lot of people is that we're not allowed to know anything about the case. So obviously there are times where you you do know some things about it and sometimes we'll be told this is a domestic violence case and those kind of things help us because it helps us to gauge roughly obviously everyone's different roughly the level of support that different people will need you know somebody that's a witness to somebody throwing stones at a bus um is probably going to need less support um and like less emotional support um than somebody who is a, a victim of something like domestic violence. And so that helps, but um, 
we are not allowed to know anything about the case because we're supposed to provide an impartial service. Whilst we can generally know like the main offence, we then can't know anything else about it. We generally know if our witness is the victim of the crime or just a witness. Um, yeah, I would say most of the people we deal with are the victims um, and we are told that they are the victim of the crime normally. <laughs> and then there's a lot of cooperating with the ushers, figuring out if trials are actually going to go ahead, if they've been double booked and one of them's going to be cancelled, um, all that kind of thing. So yeah, I've already said this but I love it. Quick overview of what I've done today. We covered the things that I said earlier basically. Um, what I found super interesting was learning about the different things that are in place for um, witnesses with learning disabilities um, and actually what a learning disability is defined as because I have to say like I I knew what it was but I didn't know what the actual definition was. In terms of autism again there were a lot of people in that room who had experience they'd either got children who had autism or just new people who had autism and in those training sessions it's all like obviously you don't have to say anything but it's always encouraged that you do talk to each other and share your experiences um, and I find that great because it means that I get to hear firsthand what other people's, like just other people's perspectives. Um, and I find that really fascinating. We also did um, some stuff about mental health, kind of so that we know what the signs are of different mental health disorders, how to react in different situations. In general, it just, I just thought it was great. Um, I feel again so much more confident dealing with witnesses um, who do have more particular needs. Really excited to get back into the courts in December. Um, obviously because I'm going back to Oxford I won't be doing it for the next eight weeks which is super annoying because I'm going to miss it so much but yeah I'll be back. I'll be doing it throughout my Christmas holiday which will be really nice. If you have any questions about the witness service, then please comment down below, that sort of thing. Um, I feel like quite a few people might want to investigate it more and get involved. All you need to do is go online, type in Citizens Advice Witness Service, and you'll be able to see if your local court is looking for people, basically. It's really worthwhile, it just is. Um, and I'm so happy that I found out about it because I didn't know about it. Hope you enjoyed this really rambly video. Basically, I love being part of the witness service, I feel like I've learnt so much, I feel like I've been really supported in dealing with different people and I can't wait to get back. Um, I'll see you next time, bye! <laughs>